I'm going to just start rolling through these because we do have a lot to cover today. Now, what are we doing? We started all over again in 10-1, and we're under what's called a continuing resolution, a.k.a. ACR. Um, and the hot seat questions for today is what happens to the government spending during a government CR? What can we do right now during the CR? And what do buyers need from us to become one of the 91%? You're saying, what does that mean? I'm going to tell you what the 91% is. And a bonus question for every one of these, how does Sam Radar help? You may be asking yourself, what is Sam Radar? SamRadar.com is a game changer. And we'll talk a little bit about that today. So participation, we love it. We love the chatification that we have here. We love the fact that we have people saying that... Um, and Usman from Phoenix, ugh. <laughs> that's a big ugh. It's a ugh. I, I think that's how you, what you meant it, Usman. <laughs> and Phyllis says, uh, is uh, from Fast Technologies. Awesome. Great to meet you, Phyllis. What's your one word for doing business with the government, Phyllis? And uh, Mike says, muddy, muddy from Pensacola. Uh, <laughs> I love it. And, uh, and Stan says, Forget about it from Houston. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> That's a classic. Forget about get, it. <laughs> oh, I like Phyllis. Phyllis says, get at it. That's an all one word. Get at it. <laughs> Love it, Phyllis. That is awesome. <laughs> all right. So we'll probably have a we have a reasonable amount of people. So if you have any questions, raise your hand or pop it in the QA. We'll keep the chat in this light. This light thing. Quick disclaimer. If you're from industry, this is not affiliated or endorsed by any government agency like the GSA or other you know, other agencies provided you for informational purposes only. And it does not guarantee a, a contract award. And if you're a govy, we love you. And yeah. your participation is voluntary. And it's not an endorsement of any vendor here that happens to join us who you would like to be able to buy from at some point, I'm sure, but it's not an obligation. So that's what that means. So today we will connect you with experts. We got Greg Clark in the house. We got Dr. Rafael Marrero in the house and Sally White. And if you want to stick around, we've been talking a little bit about Sam Radar. We'll talk about a lot more. We got new things happening in Sam Radar. So uh, my first question and this is a real poll. And they, I'm doing my best to. <laughs> All right. Why are you here today? You're here because you're new to federal contracting. Uh, wait a second. One of my clients is asking me to contact him. All right. Hey, so you knew, I'm sorry, go ahead, Sally. Oh, I was just going to say, who does that on Tuesday morning or Monday roundtable? I love That's it. Exactly <laughs> <right>. <laughs> Pepsi clients that just got <laughs> you troublemaker. That's Hello. right. So we do have some folks that are here that were one of the 173,518 prime federal contractors that won last year, doctor. Because there was some winning happening. We'll talk about that in a minute. All right. We will have in the session handouts. I should have this now. Let's see. Hopefully these are here. If not, they will be populated later. Whoops. That, that that is the session handouts. I'm gonna get my um my stuff, my session handouts too. Pay no attention to that word document that just popped up mysteriously on the screen. Because this is the rest of the information that goes along with that. That's my okay. information, and you can pop your that. information Reminds in there too, no, right, Sally? Yeah, but it's not pay no attention to that man behind the curtain, right? <laughs> so yeah, we um we we like to we like to help folks out. So there's that information. Um, so what's one word? Let's see if we got any more one worders. Do we have more one worders in here? <laughs> John Burgess says, I know a guy. <laughs> I know a guy. <laughs> hey, hey, I know a guy. That's Chris. That's great. Yeah. And it, that goes with Stan. You and Stan gotta get together, John. Forget about it. I know a guy. You know a guy. Who knows I know a guy. guy. Sally White says frustrating. I did, and I heard that a lot last week at the government <laughs> conference. Gene know. Weaver says, protest. Ah. Overwhelming. Ah, oh, Chuck, overwhelming. Yeah, that's that's a good one. That is a good one. That is a good one. So while you're doing this, you might be wondering the question about the 91%. I'm going to tell you about the 91% of the dollars, the dollars, the ducats. So first things first, 
of all the contracts that are issued, 75% zero competition. This is historic. I don't know if you guys saw this or not. I just wrote a blog on it. I uh, recapped uh, fiscal year 2023 spending. Uh, it's a preliminary report because we still have DOD dollars that come in that aren't uh, that don't show up on FPDS. But I'm telling you, this is historic. 75% across the board, 91% of the dollars were shortlisted. That means that's the question about the 91% in our hot seat question number three. And if you take a look at what's happening here, 1.34% hit SAM.gov. This creates a problem for us, especially since the government, government, Rafa, government, the government says, I post everything on SAM.gov. That's where I put all my opportunities. Well, is right. that true? Uh, right. Obviously not. Nope. So that's why um, this is really important. We'll be talking a lot about SAM radar and some of the things because 98% do not hit sam.gov and if you want to compete for the 98 you better be working on all this right so uh can you send me a clean copy of that please what are you asking uh thomas stallone hey mr stallone how you doing um i will get the, the clean copy is going to be on the blog right where it says new blog on, on that so that in my links to everybody for the session docs, the next line, the next link there is a new blog and you can download that from samradar.com. All right, let's see what we got here. We're going to end this poll, share the results. 59%. Greg Clark, new, yes, sir. new to federal contracting. Uh, some of them have subcontracts and some of them, and we have 19% that actually are winners. We appreciate you guys joining us. And 54% been here before and 46% brand new. Welcome to everybody. We really, we really like the fact that you decided to join us today. All right. So I just shared this information about the 98%. So and I'm going to ask this question in a poll so we can keep everybody engaged. Let me ask you a question about this poll. Let me see if I can find it because Zoom has changed. <laughs> the way yeah, that they, they just... operate. Oh, All yeah. right. Do you want a piece of the 98% that never hits Sam.gov? Yes. You want to compete for it? No. You only want to bid on the 2% that hits Sam.gov and GSA eBuy? Or do you not believe me no. that <laughs> only 2% hit 98 Only 2% hit Sam.gov. Now, you can be honest. You can call me out if you want. That's okay. I appreciate okay. it. I'm here for the chicken wings. Uh, All right. So you can answer the rest of those questions. I'm going to introduce these folks here today that join that are joining us. We got the doctor, the colonel, the Kentucky fried Cuban, also known as. <laughs> oh, I did bring these. Hey, Sal, you got yeah. yours? You got yours? Yeah. In honor of the doctor with the <laughs> sexy blue glasses. Yeah, get mine, get mine, get mine. Got yours? I do, I do, I do, I do. All right. Bye. So. <laughs> The reason we honor Dr. Rafael Marrero this way is because he does have the sexiest blue glasses on the planet, number one. On the planet. And number two, he helps folks with capability statements, briefings, videos, websites, and business cards. Business cards. Business. Federal business cards. Right, doctor? That's it. And we're going to show those off in just a minute because if you're if somebody on your marketing team says, what is a capability statement, and they have this face, then you obviously need to talk to Dr. Rafael Marrero because that's what he does for a living. And right. he's really, really good at it. And I'm not. So I send everything over to you, don't I, Rafa? Absolutely. We help him look good and fit right in. That's right. Make it look like you belong. We also have Greg Clark here. He is a proposal writing group called DK Associates, right? Am I doing that right, Greg? DK, DK it's right below the picture. DKA, right below this picture. <laughs> uh, right. So and we'll talk about proposal writing, getting GSA contracts, whether it makes sense, because it might not make sense or it might make perfect sense. Right. 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 right there, Greg. It's pretty easy to to determine. But that's it, yes, it's not. It's not for everybody. It's not for everybody. Now, you might know a little bit about unsolicited proposals, too, which we're going to be talking about in a couple of weeks. You're on for that, right? Yep. OK, good. <laughs> 
Fantastic. We also have Sally White, who is a master connector. She goes and does all kinds of things at different events and helps show people off. She's also happens to know a little bit about LinkedIn, don't you, Sally? Absolutely. And where am I? Show me the money green. Show me the money. Just to kind of match some of your slides. And uh, so happy to be here once again. Welcome, everybody. Awesome. So we'll we'll feature Sally in a few minutes and talk about LinkedIn and how you can use that. Uh, Peter Timmis is not here today, but he does help with funding. So if you need funding for your contracts or you and your bank is saying, hey, my head explodes when I think about federal contracting, snap a picture of that bad boy so that you can reach out to um, to Peter and get funding. Is Irene, what, what's Irene's status? Is she, is she going to be joining us sometimes again? Yeah, uh, she's actually, she's right now, she's deployed. <laughs> Oh, she's deployed. Yeah, <laughs> she can't literally deployed. Yeah. She's deployed. All right. So yeah. she's kind of a she's an interesting uh, cat. So anyway, she helps with uh, government procurement solutions and getting certifications. Uh, R- Brian can join us today because he selfishly has his own program right now, um, talking about talking about uh, accounting stuff. So he's a former contracting officer. Uh, If you're interested, you can reach out to him at acquisitionhelp.com. Good buddy of mine. Uh, We do a lot of work together. And I am the CEO of ISI Federal. I will be doing a SAM.gov tutorial tomorrow, and I'll be joining Greg in a couple of weeks talking about unsolicited proposals. I help folks with data, marketing, business development. On the right-hand side, you'll see the kind of things that we do. We also have GovBrief, where you can be the subject matter expert. There's a call. We're calling experts, calling panelists, folks like Sally White, folks like Greg Clark, folks like Rafael Marrero, who lost his camera. I have no idea where you went. I'm here. Uh, I'm here. And and your camera's not. I'm here. Sorry, you're, you're, there there I, he is. I, I fingered it. I don't Sorry. know. It's, I don't know with that. There you go. So yeah. in addition to that, we also do things for industry. If you're a subject matter expert in industry, we have Kiwi Hendricks with DLA, who's the DLA guru. We have other folks like Brian Hebel, uh, ITML, uh, Federal uh, Federal uh, Benefits Institute. Uh, they're all folks that we, we help to reach folks into the federal government. So we also do SAM Radar, which you'll see. We'll talk about that. Two minutes a day. Two minutes a day is all you have to do to start, and you'll be building relationships. Can it really work? You try it for free, and you tell me. And then we also monitor SAM.gov, and we monitor GSA eBuy, which happens to be down at the moment. Um, and we also market GSA direct to Advantage. All right, let me, uh, let's me let end this poll and see how many people. We have one person who said they still don't believe, right? And everybody else wants to compete. That's awesome. I love the fact, look at this. I, that is, that's one of the best, that's a 95%. <laughs> and then one, all right, fantastic. And we will uh, we'll, we'll feature a little bit of Sam Radar in a few minutes. But hot, qu- hot seat question of the day, I'm turning these into polls too, just because I want to know what you guys think. Mm-hmm. So hot seat question number one is, what is the question? <laughs> what happens to government spending during a CR? Mm. So what is a CR, Sally White? The CR is what's happening right now. The continuing uh, resolution, right? Continuing resolution, absolutely. And it's going to end Friday. And so it's going to be a big topic. And uh, people are frightened if they have government contracts. And when we had a presentation before, you swayed some of their concerns. Yep. Um, that was for the shutdown. Way. Yep. Government yep. shutdown. Yep. So we we do have a potential shutdown. We were going to do a briefing today about that, but it mm-hmm. doesn't look like it's going to happen. At least, at least briefing that's or what, the shutdown. What's that? The briefing or the shutdown. The briefing or the shutdown. They're neither one of them are happening. Right. <laughs> we're not doing either one. Uh, we did we did one on the 29th. That's what Sally was talking about. So. What happens during a CR, uh, Rafael Marrero? What what does the go- what government what does the government do with their spending? Do you know? Basically, what it is is there's an agreement to continue operations until a specific date. There's uh the the items are funded right up to a certain point, but the formal budget for the year has not been approved. And that's way, correct. This is not uncommon. This is pretty much par for the course. In fact, it's it's actually the contrary to what we believe. There's only been like three or four historical cases that I can think of in the last 50 years 
where government has actually got gotten its act together and had a budget approved <laughs> for the new federal fiscal. I'm going to fact check that and I'll bring you the exact instances because the norm tends to be because of bipartisan bickering, of course, on both sides. But there's bipartisan bickering? Oh, yeah. Surprise. I can't, surprise. So I can't imagine it. We're here to tell you what to do during this time, right? Yeah. Okay. And, uh, and give you some practical feedback that can actually help you navigate these uh, waters during this time. And I've got some recommendations. You let me know when you're ready. I will let you know. I We will talk about that in just a minute. So what happens to government spending? What do you see, Greg Clark, happening with uh, with bids coming out right now? I will say this, that they do spend money, but they the bids, there are not as many bids, certainly not as many as you had at the end of. You have RFIs, though, Dave, and that's important. That's true. And that's, that's where great I love that a lot of value, a lot of value because you get ahead of the competition by doing that, right? Right. I, I love that RFIs. Yeah, and, but and we, source. we've seen we've seen opportunities just steadily uh, decrease as agencies go to contract vehicles and, and Matox, right? Ooh, um, that's, there, there's and, another I mean, one. That, that's you know that's it's so different now that when when I got started in '94, um, where everything seemed to be a single award contract, mm-hmm. and now, that's a huge deal, huge problem. A, yeah, there's a there's you know you have to be on vehicles in order to see the opportunities and be eligible for award. Mm-hmm. That's that's exactly right. It goes to it goes to what we're looking at here, right? Where a lot of the what we're looking at, even the, all the awards that are happening, there's still money being spent. By the way. This mm-hmm. is this is phys- this is year to date. There's 168 billion dollars, 168 and change billion dollars that has been spent in, in October. That was in October alone. So the money still happens, but like Rafa said, it happens at the rate of last year. Well, last year they were spending at 1.7 trillion dollars. Rafa, that's right. That's, that's right. right. And then, and, to, and then to Greg, just to kind of round out Greg's uh, statement, which I which I completely concur with, there you know when I, where I see challenges, I see also opportunities, right? So, um, you know, small business set asides are not going to go anywhere near any any anytime soon. Soon, so I would recommend that you use this time to actually spit shine your capabilities statement and get your collateral ready and to look at your DSBS profile, right? Ooh, um, love it. Look at that because you can get yourself positioned for an unsolicited proposal, which is something that Greg and his team do stellarly, right? So, I mean, we can, we can, I'm telling you, we have an incredible pool of talent in this group here and we complement each other. I don't get paid by Greg or anyone for saying this. I believe in his capabilities and I believe in, in Dave's team. That's why I'm here. So I'll tell you right now, if you haven't done so, set some time aside to speak to Greg because he can help you craft an unsolicited proposal, and what's known as a sources sought notice capability statement, which we excel at, right? There you go. I love that. So there's a couple of things that I like there, and we will uh, we will get to that. That's actually part of the second question that I'm going to get to in just a minute. Oh, sorry. But um, <laughs> we, we will talk about that. See, we don't practice these things. We just we don't. We That's why Dave, I call did you want to wait on questions? questions? Did you want to hold on questions or you want to add or answer? No, go right ahead. Who's got a question? Uh, Ms. Debbie Mitchell, come on in. She says, I own a catering company. How mm. can um, this help me obtain contracts? Ooh. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. All right. So, hang yeah, on a second. Yeah, Let yeah, me I've find Debbie. Some, Let me yeah. find Debbie first. I've got some great suggestions for that. Yes. And you have some great uh, clients. So you've done some phenomenal branding and websites for, I might yep. add, Dr. Raphael. Yep. Yep, so, Debbie Mitchell, you there? Yes, I am. Awesome, Debbie Mitchell. Where are you located? New Iberia, Louisiana, heart of Cajun and field country. All right. I'm talking and gumbo I, land. And I work. I want to work in Texas. And I want to work in Louisiana. I want to work all over. All right. Well, guess what? There's a lot of government equipment. stuff that happens down in Louisiana. I'm in. I'm in. Yes. I have equipment that's road-worthy, road-ready. I am. Uh, First responder for the Red Cross whenever there's a natural disaster. So I have the equipment. I just need the contracts. Sounds like FEMA land to me, right, Sally? Absolutely. Sounds yep. like FEMA land. You came you to know, the right Dave, place. Maybe uh, that's right, FEMA and also MREs, right? Meals ready to eat and yep. hit and serve. That would be perfect for her, for FEMA. And yep. CP, by the way. Just saying. But that's not all because I to just, your point, I just there's, what? you can, I you just can do catering all over the place, Deb. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry, Deb. 
They just finished their six year contract feeding the U.S. Marshals at Camp Beauregard. Ah, lots so you of past know, performance. Yeah, that's right. So that's one of that's great. So you have past performance with U.S. Marshals, right? Correct. And right? I feed the Louisiana National Air National Guards, Army Reserves, but that's, you know, on a rotation basis. So, and, and National Guard you have? Yes. National so, Guard. so the National Guard straddles two different sides, right? Uh-huh. They do state and local. I mean, state and federal, right? Yep. So, uh, and U.S. Marshals. So how was it, okay. how big was your contract with U.S. Marshals? Uh, it was a six-year contract. How no. how much how much was it for? It it didn't have a value because they only had uh, feeding when they were training, so it was just you know tossed up. They tell you eighty thousand, but you were lucky to make forty. <laughs> All right. So over the course of that contract, the reason I was asking is, do you do you know if you have a CPARS on that? I do not. Okay. So for those of you who don't know what that is, a CPARS is is kind of like your um your grade for uh, your, your report card. Um, so what I would say is this as well. So number one, you want to evangelize your success with U.S. Marshals because that is what gives them comfortability with you, right? Okay. Right? So you want to make sure you're reaching out to people and you may uh, be you may be wondering, how can I find the people that are doing it? Well, that's how Sam Radar can help. <laughs> <laughs> that was super selfish of me and a great setup, Debbie. Uh, but but yeah, you want to you want to find the folks that are operating in your space mm-hmm. and you want to go after those people. You don't want to sit back and wait. You yep. want to go after them. OK, it's like how did you get that contract, by the way? I'm 8A certified, woman owned certified, MBE, WBE. Minority business enterprise, disadvantaged woman business enterprise. You have it all so going I, on. I have, I have all the acronyms in the alphabet. You, do. <laughs> you know, that she probably put some some mean gumbo in front of them and got them to that's, say, that's right, that. man. That's it. Actually, that's it. For the, actually, for the U.S. Marshals, I did. I did a sampling of what I could do. See and that? They hired me wow. on the spot. I know my stuff. I'm telling you. Debbie, be sure and put your information to the um, panelists so that we have it. Because I know that, again, Dr. Raphael works a lot with um, restaurants and organizations. He could help you. And spice companies. Yeah, exactly. That's right. You have, you work with spice. What's the spice company you work with, Rafa? Oh, I I have it right here. I want to show it to you. So I have uh, Ambaselli Foods. They're a manufacturer of spices. This is a woman owned firm. And she's up in uh, Salt Lake. I mean, she's up in Utah, Salt Lake City, Utah. Let me tell you, this lady is impressively intelligent. She's impressive. She's highly intelligent. She's an engineer by trade. Okay, and she came to the United States to work in a few in a food processing uh, uh, company. Le- learned the business. Loved this country. Wanted to stay. She set up shop, Dave. And you know what? She's crushing it right now. She's <laughs> got business. Go- she's got business going on with Amazon. With all the major e-tailers, she's got a point of sale strategy. She manufactures her own spices, right? And right. when we were designing her her, uh, her 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 work, Dave, my creative director ran to the kitchen and said, "Wait a minute, I remember this this brand." And he came oh, up and found he came the jar. out with it. Yeah, yeah, he was using it awesome. barbecuing. He said, this "Well, you got to awesome. get that. Make sure. Well, that I think what Sally said was great. Make sure you pop your stuff into to the chat." Um, right. So that we can make some connections for you. Um, and and Raphael, 8A, I, go oh, ahead. Sorry, go ahead. So. Raphael, be sure to connect me with your client in Utah. We can go have lunch together because remember, I'm in Park City. So Absolutely. do a group text. Absolutely. And then number one and then number two, I have a, a someone who just got a contract, a government co- contract doing conferences. And as you know, governments do a lot of conferences and they have catering con- contracts. Yep. So I'd love to connect you with uh, this company that's doing government conference contracts and they could meet you and possibly bring you in to do catering for those. That, awesome. Yeah. I have a, I have a follow-up with, uh, with, with Debbie. Dave, if she's, if, is Debbie still on? Yep. Yes, I am. Just there. So you, um, uh, you were asked how you got that contract with the military and you said, well, you're 8A and you have all these ownership certifications. Well, a lot of people have that, but they, but they haven't been able to, to tr- have that translate into contracts. So how did you get a contract? My BOS in uh, New Orleans mm-hmm. told me about the contract that was coming up, and I went to I went to sample with them, 
And once I sampled with them, they hired me on the spot. So it was a contract coming out and you got it sole sourced. Yes. Mm. Yep. But she, her strategy was uh, she had, she, you know, she was very smart. She took the whole like uh, gumbo thing and, and did the sampling. Product sampling never fails at this. Mm. It's not a point of sale in this case, but it's actually at the venue, right? With the clients. Always Correct. cater to your clients and show them some love. And that's what she did, right? Correct. That's I went it. to the U.S. Marshals compound at Camp Beauregard and brought food with me when I interviewed. So they were able to see and taste the food right then and there. And I also manufactured my own spices. It's low sodium. And I have a, uh, a okay. spicy I'm and in. a regular. So I in. brought all that with me to I'm show in. them that I have Dr. a low Oh, This is your, this is your. I'm in. I'm in. Listen, uh, I'll give you a one hour console for your gumbo. <laughs> <laughs> you know, not... I can do that. Tell me where I need to fly. I'm there. <laughs> Uh, Debbie, I have to tell you something super quick. So you spell your name D-E-B-B-I, like my former right. boss Debbie Fields from Mrs. Fields Cookies. And oh. uh, back in the 80s when I was in the mailroom working with her, I basically, she would come in, she had 24 cookie stores, and she got going by sampling um, her cookies in Palo Alto, California. And uh, I was basically said to her, you know, I don't know, there's been this woman, she's new, she's on television, her name's Oprah. I bet if we got cookies on her show, she'd sell more cookies. So I would love to connect you, Miss Debbie, with my friend Debbie Fields, because oh, A, you spell your name the same way. B, she loves helping people, and C, she has a ton of contacts. So awesome. You yep. love it. And love D, it, love it, love it. Her company was a unicorn. unicorn awesome. company. Yeah. All right. So let's let's talk a little bit about the stakeholders because I think that um let me make sure this uh, resume. Okay, here we go. So the stakeholders that we're talking about building relationships with that you were talking about, Debbie, is you were actually talking to both project managers, the people that actually serve the food, and the contracting officers, the ones that gave you the award, right? So we also have contracting officer representatives and senior management. So I'm going to talk a little bit about what it looks like for the folks that are new. You have your politicals that are appointed, right? Then you have your SESs, your senior executives. And your, <clears throat> these are your, like your deputy directors, and folks that are just underneath of your um, of your uh, of your political appointees, right? They're the they're the life lifetime bureaucrats. On on the left side, you'll see program people, and on the right side, you'll see procurement. Because guess what? These are the folks that care about your gumbo, how how great it is. Now the contracting officer probably cares about the gumbo too, if you, you did the sampling with them too. But by and large. They're the ones that care about the quality of the food, while these other folks care about how they get the contract done, right? And the, what you made it easy for them is you're an 8A, so they can do a sole source award. That's what Greg was talking about, is that they didn't even have to go out to, to put that out for bid, because you can get a sole source award from your socioeconomic status. Not only that, you can do it as a woman-owned. You got two check boxes. You got woman-owned and 8A minority, right? And that's a benefit to the buyers. So the buyer, though, doesn't come up with the need, do they? It's the program people that come up with the need. They say, we need gumbo. And yes. they throw it over the fence to procurement. And those are the folks that we're going to see in the session handouts. You'll have the winnable opportunity matrix. That's the program manager. Program manager needs something, throw it over the fence to the contracting officer. And that's how opportunities happen. At the end of the day, 91% never hit the street. And you were wow. one of those for how many years? Five years? You said five years, six years? What'd you say? Six years with COVID. They added an extra year because of COVID. Oh, right on. And, and when does your eight day expire? Uh, my 8 expires in 2026. 2026. So you still got time. Got time. It okay. Sounds like the, uh, it sounds like the the opportunity was already in the works when when you, uh, Debbie, when you got involved. And for it to still go to you as a sole source, um, that must have been some crazy gumbo. <laughs> <laughs> I brought crawfish etouffee. I bought gumbo. I bought jambalaya. I bought wow. uh, uh, Greek, I brought Haitian, I bought oh Bahamian dishes, right. I bought we're, vegan, vegetarian. We okay. are, we are, we're closing the webinar the down and we're heading to Louisiana. Because, I brought, I brought some Oh my gosh. That is awesome. 
<laughs> Love it. Okay. So when so, I went in, I went in with everything. That's awesome. So that's hot good. seat question number two is what can we do during the CR? And Rafael Marrero was actually talking about this. I'm going to open up the next poll. Yep. Oops. I'm going to find this. But, right. What can we do? During the, people the, in the, chat, the people in the chat are starving, Dave. Yeah. Okay. I'm hungry too. <laughs> yeah. I, we're all hungry. Yes. That's yes. all Debbie's yes. fault. Yeah. yeah. That's, a good, right. that's a good thing. So we just wait for to post bids. We reach out to federal customers. We reach out to our new prospects. We team and we sub with primes who are winning. And what would be a great big help for you? Maybe that we we're talking about this, Rafa. You let's talk. Let's show us off that that uh, capability statement you got there. I'm gonna. Oh. I'm gonna stop sharing. Yep. I say I'm gonna stop sharing. I'm gonna show you that. <laughs> stop sharing. You and you can you can share your your capability statement of the spices that that um and oh, and by the way the government buys everything right rafa absolutely absolutely and everybody needs a capability statement even if you don't have super wow. sexy spices or or things wow. right wow <laughs> gorgeous debbie's wow. already now debbie's hungry but debbie this is not only uh uh informationally compliant it draws on the colors of the spices that miss uh sylvia sells right so you've got elements of color there um, you've got in the background, because she's from Africa, we came up with some African patterns in the background to model that. And then we use red, green, and black and, 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 and use the black space as, uh, to kind of, uh, you know, offset our type and everything, but look at the graphic elements here, right? Um, yeah. you'll look this brand up. Bamboselli is very popular in Amazon and other, um, I drafted her, um, her capabilities narrative to comply with new re informational requirements. Uh, look at the core competencies and look at the uh, the key differentiators. They they speak mm -hmm. the language of contracting officers. How do I know this? Because I was one, right? <laughs> at the Fortune 500 level and also as a program manager for government. So I sat on the other side of the table and I evaluated vendors all day. That's what I did for a living at the highest level. So if you look at private, look at this, private labeling, brand design and packaging solutions for uh, product testing and quality assurance, right? She's got QA, QC. She's an engineer. End-to-end -end product lifecycle management, market research, et cetera. Custom blending and manufacturing services, wholesale program. Look at the key differentiators. What's the number one thing that I, that I, that I, that I called out? Made in the USA, right? Why is that important? It's big because there's a big there's a big push for uh, to repatriate our supply chain manufacturing facilities from 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 uh, the People's Republic of China because of various issues with human rights there with the with the minorities in the country and how they're exploiting slave labor and so we want to bring we want to create jobs here in America in our inner cities in our communities right and Sylvia rather than talking about it she's actually doing something about it she's got a great facility. And all those beautiful products that you see down there, Dave, they're mm -hmm. all hers, right? So if you notice, she's licensed. She's not reselling someone else's package and putting a label on it. She's actually licensed by the food establishment of Utah, right? Those are her contact information, uh, Sally. So I'll give, I'll do the intro. And then she's selling to Walmart, to Amazon, uh, community uh, marketplace, and others, right? She got an award from the uh, SBDC in Utah. So she's got 10 years of experience. If you notice, this is a well-crafted, well-written capability statement that captures the six C's, right? Mm -hmm. It's got our code. What are the six C's? Well, you've got your codes, right? That's number one. Yep. You've got a capabilities narrative is number two, right? The company information is number three, right? This is a continuation of the industry codes. Now notice that I have Nate's codes. And I have PSC codes. What are PSC codes? What does it stand Product for? Supply codes. You need to have Product them. supply code. You got to have them. You got to have them if you're doing work with the federal government. If you're doing work with the state government, then it's commodity codes or NIGP codes, National Institute for Government Procurement. Mm -hmm. uh, they also go by the United Nations Supply Chain Product Codes uh, when it's an international deal, like at the UN. Um, then you've got your other C, which is a contact information. You see this right here? Government business point of contact, right? Yep. And certification. Raphael, I love how you have a picture of her on that. That is beautiful. Yes. And Miss Sylvia. 
She's got a great smile. She's got a great smile and she represents her brand. She's yeah. a brand ambassador. So this is the, guys, no kidding. This is the way you need to look. And Dave, I've got a before and after to show you. Um, oh. This is going to, I mean, this is be, this is a labor of love, obviously. We were, we were competing to see which one of our designers could, you know, could get the job. We sent her five designs, Dave, from five different designers in our team. And she was like watching the ball. She was watching the game on Sunday. And she said, wow, um, now you've really made it difficult for me because I've got five beautiful samples yeah. from different artists to choose from, right? Everybody was competing for hers because they were in love with the brand. This is what we crank out. Now, um, she came to us with a PTAC design capability statement. You can imagine what that a looks PTAC, like. PTAC is what? But before there were the Procurement Technical Assistance Centers. Mm -hmm. They've been relabeled the Apex Accelerators now. Yep. And but show us the high quality P tax stuff that you see. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, I'm going to show you. That's right what now. I have. Let me say this. Let me well, say this. P tax people want to do good things, right? They want to do good things. Of course, of course. This is we just need to help them do good things, right? Good so people go that want to do good things. Yep. Yeah. Let me let me stop sharing here. Let me show you. Um, we had a, a a gentleman, by the way, a veteran that was actually doing work with uh, with the P tax and came to me with a. With a actually, this was this was not even a P tag day. This was a, a an unscrupulous company up in northern Florida that we all know. Oh yeah, it, uh, it's I'm in a pan. It, not, I mean, it's in a Tampa St. Pete. I'm going to show you what they did and and how much they charge them for this. This is ridiculous. So this is what they gave me. Oh, see this? Scary. See that? Mm -hmm. This is the way they treated one of our veterans, right? Uh, so they designed this. This was a, and they told him, oh, and please don't change anything. Please don't change anything, right? So I'm going to show you what we came back with, okay? Um, that's before. And I and, and by the way, Mr. Morris is a service-disabled veteran. He served our nation. He's a very, very talented uh, uh, security solutions provider, right? So I'm going to show you what we did with him. And you're going to love this because this is what it's all about. Yep. I'm going to show you right now. So this is driver technologies. This is what we did for him. That wow. is fantastic. Beautiful. Man. Wow. And that's why I send all my stuff to Rafael Marrero. So Difference. what can we do? We can we can reach out to these folks, right? You, now you got to get it to them. You got your capability statement. You mm -hmm. got you want to proactively go out after these people. Now is the best time to build relationships, right? Right, Sally? Absolutely. It's a wonderful time. You can do it on LinkedIn. You can do it at conferences. Um, it's the perfect time to build relationships. Yep. So so it, and and if, if there's anything we know, is that people still buy from people they know, like and trust. Period. That's what happens everywhere. You do it, I do it, they do it. It doesn't change, just because it's government. And yes, there are spending a lot of money even now, right? Right? There, there's. We just showed it. It's it's hundreds of billions of dollars already, mm -hmm. already spent this year. So. That, that's what we can do. We can reach out to these folks and go get them. Because if you're waiting for it to happen, I have people tell me, I register on SAM.gov. I got everything I need. Mm -hmm. Yep. And I'm never going to see Dave, you. Can I, Dave, can I show when you get a minute just what they yep. could do with their LinkedIn, maybe? I'd love yeah, to know. Yes. Well, yes. Um, in fact, I want to do that as part of, um, of the 91% part. I want to do that in the next question. I do want to show the LinkedIn. Yeah. Positively want to do that. Okay. Let's see. Uh, we got Debbie's information in there. Uh, Gregory's here. Gregory, unmute yourself. I, I gave you the ability to unmute. Gregory says, we, we are literally made in the in the USA manufacturer. What do you manufacture, Gregory? If you have a microphone. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if you can hear me. Can you hear me? I can't. Wow, look at that picture. Uh, <laughs> is that really you? Yeah, it is, but it's one of those. Uh, I mean, one of those. What do they? I don't know. They filter it or something. I don't know, that's... man. That looks like a Marvel yeah. character or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hear that. Okay. Here, I, I, let me let me see if I can. Well, I it's can all right. Camera on, but anyways. Um. So yeah, we're an electronics contract manufacturer out here in California, and uh, we basically do you know contract work for uh, just industrial customers, some of them in the prosumer area, some of them, a uh, sm small portion of them are independent, uh, uh, like third-party military. Um, but but we make everything here. 
in the U.S., um, you know, from the ground up, per se, That's for the awesome. small to the kind of medium-sized uh, customers. Um, we, but we also have a electronic, uh, or I should say electric actuator that drives uh, ailerons and uh, flaps and things of that nature, kind of in the aerospace market, in the drone market. Mm-hmm. And then robotics, and that is a uh, that is essentially wholly made here in the U.S. Uh, with the exception of a motor that's made in Switzerland that we use, um, a small compact motor. Um, but uh, that's a proprietary design that, uh, like I said, it does get used in drones and uh, NASA and Boeing and Bell helicopter and stuff like that. But it's it's. We don't have any real visibility to those other contracts. I, I'm, I know that the government has needs for those sort of actuators. And, uh, and to your point, a lot of your, what you're going to be selling to are the primes, right? Yeah, I would assume so. Yeah. So, yeah. And and um, real quick, as far as Sam Radar, I'll show it to you in a few minutes. <clears throat> but Sam Radar will show you the folks that are winning. So that'll be your prime that you can reach out to the prime. And go get them. But I love the fact that you now the buyer, you can reach out to the buyer and find exactly who it is at the prime that they're working with as well. Because that's one of the biggest problems that you have is figuring out who it is, right? Right. Who, who should you be talking to? So that that becomes part of that. So yeah, I appreciate that. And and BAA, so Buy American Act is increasing for the per- percentage. So you already have the advantage. Uh so pr- promoting yourself as a hundred percent. Uh, BAA compliant or, you know, the fact that you're made here in the United States, you mm-hmm. mentioned you have proprietary information, proprietary um, solutions. Is it patented? Uh, it's not um, mostly the, um, so I acquired this company from a, a, actually a, a close friend of mine who wanted to retire and keep the company mm-hmm. going and make some money. Um, and part of his uh, rationale was uh, just not, kind of exposing the secret sauce in it and it's uh it's internally it's just the absolute bare components so um anything else would be built on top of it anyways but gotcha for that reason he just didn't want to expose he's got a lot of unique uh approaches to how he is able to create the power and performance in such a small form factor so yeah well the government's always looking for those things and so are the uh so are the primes and aerospace and other places that are looking for that so uh that's one thing that i would say and we i i would talk if you're if you're interested we could talk about gov brief a little bit more uh outside of this and we can talk about how we can help you get get out in front of those folks too yeah so that's, that, awesome. that's what i was hoping that's what i was hoping and man that is more sexy even than your your photo is more sexy even than Rafael Mero's glass. Yes, that was a great photo, Gregory. I was going to say the same thing. That's an amazing photo. It it is an amazing Thanks. photo. I have no idea what you really look like, but if you look at anything like that, you're staying away from every every woman. Most that interesting I know man in the world. Friend. Most interesting man in the world. Stay Lucy thirsty, Holmes. my friends. <laughs> that's that's so funny. I get that all the time. That's the one Dude, thing I always say. He bowls is, is, overhanded. Mosquitoes <laughs> don't bite him out of respect. <laughs> all, all we got to do is put you on a briefing and sh- have you just oh, show your face and as well. Oh. 10,000 people are coming. Yeah. That's fantastic. Wow, that's very nice. I appreciate hey, that. Hey, Thank man. you. Very nice. Thanks, <laughs> thanks, for, uh, th- th- thanks for letting us do that to you, Gregory. <laughs> <laughs> appreciate it. All right. Hot seat. Thank question you. number Adam three. Paul, Robert. Adam, Paul, Robert. What do buyers need? from us to become one of the 91%. We've already talked about capability statement. We've already talked about, hey, you got to evangelize yourself to get outside, out there in that, to be shortlisted. Remember, 91% are shortlisted. That's one of five. That's where I want to live. That's where you want to live, right, Sally? Absolutely. I want to live there. I want to live so, in shortlist land. The shortlist. That's exactly right. Yeah. So let's talk about one of the things that you like to do is do research on LinkedIn. So tell, give us a little primer of how you do it. Share your screen and sure, show sure. us how you go about finding people on LinkedIn. Sure. Because so, this is awesome. Just just this alone is awesome. And then we'll get to some questions I'll be super well. quick. So I'm just going to show you. I love what uh, Raphael did, the sort of before and after. So one of the things I do as an executive connector, I watch a lot of Netflix, Hulu documentaries. And this is a gentleman who has 19,110 followers. He was on a Netflix. He was featured on um, a Netflix called Poison, right? Some kind of an interest. But he's a former deputy commissioner of food and policy. 
As you can see, he has his nice picture, very handsome, very brilliant, but he has nothing up here. Uh, not as bad, but sort of as bad. Um, this is a CEO and president of a company. He connects to his uh, page, his LinkedIn page. However, this is what you could look like. So this is a customer. They basically um, train in 57 countries. They have SOCOM contracts. They do virtual learning. He didn't have a picture and he didn't have a LinkedIn. So what LinkedIn does is you can swap up a picture. That's nice. There's nothing wrong with that. But what we do is do some really kind of cool graphics and tell a story. And LinkedIn also, you have a URL, but you can't um, put it on LinkedIn. So we put like a little QR code. And then- I also, love that, Sally. Yeah, he that's needs a, a winner. Rebrand. So you put the QR code up there. Yeah, yeah. So he needs a rebranding. So that's where obviously Dr. Raphael and his team comes in before he gets the contract with Greg. And he also needs- um, Sam Radar and Dave and his wonderful team got on with this customer last week and showed them what they can do in their NACE code. But this is something really unique and in interesting. So it tells a story. We like to tell a brand story on LinkedIn. That's so great, he does. So. so the story we came up with is learning reimagined. That's what we're branding him as. And so the first you have this guy who's teaching. Now what's really interesting about this, LinkedIn allows you to put a QR, your, your logo here. But what we did is we made two pictures and you see the guy's leg coming in. So it's seamless, a so very creative um, on-brand stuff. And then and they're in the classroom, and then it's rebranding. So that's just an idea of what you can do on LinkedIn. I'm going to stop sharing. The key with LinkedIn is it's basically, you know, free. I mean, it's free unless you get LinkedIn Navigator like I did because I got thrown in LinkedIn jail one time. It was terrifying. Um, but LinkedIn Navigator allows you to send more LinkedIn. So it's free. You can have your brother-in-law do it. You can do it yourself. Um, but it's better if you get someone like Dr. Raphael to brand you and someone who can really do a nice LinkedIn page because people go to LinkedIn. And how we work together with the Dave team, you have to know who's buying in your persona and your target. So you use Sam Radar. You see who's buying. Then you go to LinkedIn, see some of the executives. Then you connect. And then you do this beautiful picture. And then when you get ready to do your contract or proposal, that's where Greg can help you. And then uh, when you need uh, money because you've got a million-dollar opportunity, uh, Peter Timbus can help you do it. So we're really a full ecosystem group here. Yeah. Um, highly recommend LinkedIn. Hope that answers. Well, I need to know the balance of the ERD FP. Sorry? You talking to us, Greg? I'm I'm sorry about that. I'm mute mute you. I'm like I don't know that about LinkedIn. Is that kind of uh, so? Yeah, so yeah. Thanks. So think about. I like LinkedIn because you wind up being able to look by agency, like you like you do a lot. You'll find somebody that's going to be at an event, and then you'll look them up on LinkedIn, yep. and then maybe connect even before you get there, right? So exactly, and you can also do amazing data mining on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. So. So with LinkedIn, you have your first level connections, but with LinkedIn Navigator, you can actually mine and create lists of second and third level connections based on your keywords, your SEO words that you'd mm -hmm. optimize on your website or in your LinkedIn or your pages. So lots of cool stuff, just like Dr. Moraro said, Greg, uh, Dave, any of us happy to do a you know, free consultation to just share what I know to see if that would add value. So, and one of the other things, Greg, uh, I want to pull you in on this too, because um, a lot of times buyers are going to only release contract opportunities to GSA contract holders, right? Yeah. So you, you got your camera working or did it die? Hang on. All right. There you go. He's trying to look like Gregory Liu, I think. <laughs> <laughs> He's trying Good to update his picture. <laughs> Good luck with that. <laughs> Ain't no chance. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So, so tell us what a GSA contract is and what it does for folks. Well, it's a contract vehicle. You know, it's the most basic um, description where um, it's a contract that, that you get through uh, General Services Administration that every civilian and military agency in the, in the federal government can buy from. Um, and in some instances, state agencies and municipalities as well. Um, so, I mean, I'm working with a client now who has an Air Force customer who wants to buy through them, buy from them, go, go get a contract with them through the scheduled contract. They have no idea. So as soon as this is over, I got to tell an Air Force base how to uh, uh, establish a contract through somebody else's GSA scheduled contract because that office has never done it. Imagine that. You're actually going to be informing the contracting office within the Air Force how to do business. Yeah. Wow. They want, 
You're not you know, the, that's not the first time you've done it either. No. So, you know, you, you've had it before. You know, how do I get to you? Yep. Well, here we have a GSA scheduled contract. That's how you get to us. All right. How does it work? So I, I have to do that as soon as, as soon as this is over. <laughs> so, but what I love about GSA contracts, it, well, first of all, you're already shortlisted against the millions of folks that are on SAM.gov. That's the first thing, because there's only about 15,000 companies that have GSA contracts. Mm -hmm. To your point, though, the question is, how do I get to you? They're going to ask the question. If you're talking to a buyer, they're going to say, how do I get to you? And a GSA contract is one of the easiest ways to have a vehicle. You also have BPAs, and IDIQs, indefinite delivery, indefinite quantity, blanket purchase agreements for BPAs, right? Those yeah, are or, or, or we're just, or they're or they're eight A like uh, like or, like Debbie. Exactly. So socioeconomic set asides are one avenue to be able to restrict the competition. The contract vehicle is another avenue in order to be able to restrict the competition. So much so, and you mentioned this as well, the new IDIQs. And large blanket purchase agreements are creating a problem for a lot of businesses, aren't they? Yeah, because if you're not on those contract vehicles, then you don't even see the opportunities. And and you're certainly not eligible to be awarded the, the, the contract. You don't even see them. Right. And right. and so that's why when and you're chasing, you just did, what did you just do? Oasis. O Oasis? Yeah. yeah. Oasis Plus. Oasis Plus, phase one? Phase one. Phase one. And so this this is where as you got for folks that are new, as you start to develop your relationships with the buyers, which you need, you got to build relationships with the buyers and the program people. And you start to interact with these people. <clears throat> they're going to start to use words like that, like IDOQ and BPA and GWAC and all the things that you threw out earlier. Right. Yeah. And we need to understand what they are. And you don't have to understand them while you're talking to them. <laughs> you're gonna you, you come back and you say, "Hey, Greg, this this guy said it's a G whack for X Y Z and Z, blah blah blah." And you, say, what does that mean? And Greg can help you with that, right? And you, and it'll help yeah. you determine one if you qualify, right? Because you either qualify or don't. It's it's. It mostly clear like like it, it's, it's not mostly clear, clear. What kind, it's just like the rest clear. of the like, government <laughs> they don't tell you how much sales you should have but they can you could they can reject you if they don't feel like you have enough because you have to meet the sales requirements once you're approved so they have to your the evaluator of your application has to determine for his or herself if they believe that you're going to meet your sales requirements of twenty five thousand dollars in your first two years and twenty five thousand per year thereafter, right. based upon everything that you presented. What you're offering, how much, how much you've sold, what your revenues have been in, in um, presenting to those. Do you have any federal customers that you sell to that you could build from? All those things go into that determination, but they don't quantify that. If you ask anybody, they're going to say, "Well, the evaluator will make that determination." Mm -hmm. So you're not in it, so that you know. None of us are in it for twenty five thousand dollars. Just keep the contract, right, Craig? So, yeah, it's not a, it's not a huge lift, but it is enough of a lift that it keeps people from taking up space who were really motivated to get on the schedule and then fizzled out after they got their award. And now they're now the, these lists of companies are enormous, and they're and they're they're filled up with a bunch of people who aren't active. So as long as you're doing a minimum of twenty five, then that keeps the list of companies active. And the point of that is so that agencies who want to buy now have a list of active people that they can that, um, to choose from mm -hmm. if they if they choose to to use that go that route and they go that route to the tune of about forty billion dollars a year right that's right yep forty billion so fifteen thousand companies split in forty billion that's not bad just saying not bad that's the way that works. All right, cool. We're going to get to some questions in just a minute. I'm going to uh, give the opportunity for you guys to to reach out of anything. Let's see. Let's see. What do we got here? We got. And Simone says, thank you. You're welcome. Gregory Liu has to leave. He's asking if it's recorded. He says, thanks. We so Dar Darwain says, how do you build a relationship with a buyer? That's a great question. The first thing you need is to know who they are. 
That's the first part. Figure out who they are. Then when that to build a relationship, what I love to do, and I'll show you in just a minute, is to just say, hey, I'd like to chat with you about this award that you just made to one of my competitors. Because yeah. we kind of do that kind of thing, or we have a different type of way of doing it that may be better for your agency. You just need to start the dialogue. Let me jump in here, Dave. Go ahead. Um, Sally, I don't know if you met this guy in Orlando, but there was a uh, a guy in, a, in boots and a cowboy hat walking around. And yeah, he and he um, he has an, an IT services company. And I happened to uh, be at the same table as he and his wife um, during lunch one day. And we started talking. He's been in business four months. He has subcontracts with SAIC, Deloitte, and two other huge companies. And in those uh, subcontracting roles, he is interacting directly with the, the government customer. I said, sir, you are doing, you've accomplished what everybody hopes they can accomplish. And the fact that you've done it in four months, it's incredible that, that you know, so you talk about relationships. Yeah, you want to have relationships with major prime contractors. You want to develop relationships with agencies as well. He's he's got him coming out of his sleeves. Mm -hmm. Amazing, and it's because he's out there. He's built it, and and going to these events like you you did at NVSB. But the I guarantee he just didn't sit around waiting for the phone to ring, right, Greg? Nope, absolutely not. Yeah, I mean he's he's an SDVOSB, yeah, and he's um, he realizes that that's his play. Mm -hmm. You know, because those large companies they need to subcontract out a certain certain portions of their work they get they have to every contract they're awarded has a um, small business contracting plan subcontracting For plan all the large businesses that's exactly right all yeah. right we want to get folks out of here but i i want to make sure that you get the chance to reach out to the dr rafael marrero if you filled out something that's saying hey you would you want to have a great capability statement yeah. Rafa and his team reach out to you for that and uh just so you know he does capabilities uh briefings as well and business cards. We're going to feature that at t sometime, uh, Rafa, your business yeah. cards as well. Mm. Yep. Uh, Greg Clark will be joining me on the 28th at 1 p.m. for unsolicited proposals. Rafa mentioned that as well. It's a process that we you can use to get to use for marketing as well as um, becoming a sole source direct awardee without having to have any socioeconomic set aside capability like an 8A or woman-owned or hub zone or any of those. So uh, reach out to Greg for proposal writing. He will be joining me, like I said, on unsolicited proposals for federal agencies. You can reach out to Sally White for LinkedIn. She's a LinkedIn expert as well as just a master at being able to help folks out at events. You were there on with Peter Timbus, right? That's one of your Correct. clients. Yep, we had a great booth and gave away money and all kinds of other things. It was really cool. Yep. Got to meet Greg <laughs> and Kevin and some of the colleagues I met in here. That's right. We meet a whole bunch of, yep, I love all the folks that go there. So Peter Timbis is the other one that does contract funding. If you need help with funding, we all need help with funding from time to time. I'm telling you, when it got down to be yes, the, the shutdown, uh, he was he was a superstar on the, on the shutdown briefing that we did. Irene Morales helps. She's out in the field right now. She's actually she's wearing, a, she's wearing a blue jacket right now in a vest. <laughs> she's also a, a govy. So yep. it's uh it's an interesting situation. Uh but yeah, she can help with um certifications and, and documents and things like that. Um and I can't say enough about Brian Hebel. Uh we do a lot of work with him. And he's a good buddy of mine. We're working on a huge project that's going to be released in the next couple of months. And it is going to change a lot of, of the world as far as being able to leverage CPARs. So that's that's that kind of thing. And I'm Dave Logue. Uh, I really appreciate you guys joining us for, for this today. And um, I will be uh, doing a sam.gov tutorial on how you can... Um, how you can develop your searches and some of the things that you can do. Uh, we already do it with Sam Radar, so it's easy for me to be able to show you how to do it. If you join me tomorrow, it's a, you can check that out on GovBrief. And the next 321 days, we have 321 days left to disrupt the status quo. The status quo is federal buyers are buying from your competitors. That's the status quo. 
And unless we do something about it, they're not going to let you in. You got to answer the question of why they should let you in. And so if you want to stick around for a couple of minutes, uh, I'll show you a little bit about Sam Radar. Uh, and you can you can check that out at, in the and you can check for free as well. But uh, I'll show you. We got a brand new template that I'll show you in just a minute. But I really want to thank you guys, uh, Sally and, and Rafa and Greg. Always great to hang out with you guys. Any last parting comments for anybody? I got to jump and help a client close the deal with the Air Force. Uh, whatever. Oh, Greg, thanks, everybody. I highly <laughs> recommend you stick around. It will be the best 15, half an hour you spend. Uh, it's not even going to be that long. It's only going to be a couple minutes. It'll be the best couple of minutes you spend. <laughs> so, uh, and I don't buddy. think we have. I don't think we. Uh, let's see. Gregory, we'll talk. We'll talk about that, um, and we'll get you. Uh, we'll get you followed up with this for sure. So I'm going to show you real quick what Sam Radar looks like. F first of all, Sam Radar operates from email. Why? Because we live in email. We don't live in apps. You can always dig down into the research if you want to. But here is the secret. Every day, somewhere between 15 and 25,000 contracts get awarded every single day. Mm. Now, we can't process that. In our brains, we just cannot do it. But what we did is we built the engine behind the scenes to say what matters to you. By NAICS codes, and you mentioned PSE, your product service codes that you, that you can use, you also have keywords. All of these things are important and they're never going to show up on sam.gov 98% of the time. We've got to have a plan. We've got to have a process to do that. So what I'm saying is in two minutes, can you review a few emails in two minutes? And the answer is, of course you can. You can't look at 15 to 30,000 or 25,000 contracts in a given day. At the end of September, it was up in 30,000 lane. Right now, it's about 15,000. You don't have time for that. You don't get paid for federal research. That's not your job. Your job is to build relationships. Two minutes. That's all I want you to do is two minutes. Now, question is, do you care about, let's take a look at these awards. This is a new, uh, this is a new uh, layout. So this is brand spanking new. The first thing I want to show you is this is an award for $342,000. When was it done? A few days ago. And one offer received. What does that tell you? Zero competition. Zero. It tells you a little bit about what it was about. It also shows you, you can download the current stats that you can find out about. But it already, it shows you that Caitlin Savina is the contact that you want. And by just clicking this button, you can email Caitlin and who, uh, Darwin, I think it was a, who was asking the question earlier. Let me go look that up. I don't remember your, your name. It's Darwin, right? Dar Darwin Frost was asking, how do you build a relationship with a federal buyer? Well, here's one. And all you want to do is kick an email. Can you do this in two minutes? Yes, you can. You can fill it out and say, hey, Caitlin, I'd love to chat with you about this award. I'm working on a similar project. I just want your insight. Is Tuesday or Thursday better for you? And just ask for the dialogue. And then when you get Caitlin on the line, we have scripts. We have email templates that we'll show you. These are templates. Every one of these templates, every one of these scripts that we've developed to help you using this tool to engage has made millions of dollars. Millions in this space. And we have hundreds of of Sam Radar users doing this right now. And all of them are flying under the radar. They're going behind the scenes. PTACs don't know about these. Ozdaboos don't know about them. Nobody knows about this contract until after it hits the street. Our job, help you get in front of the next one. So that is what Sam Radar looks like. And it happens in emails just like this. And you might ask a question. It's like, oh, here's one. Here's a zero contract amount where offers received for 24. That one hit Sam.gov. Get 24 respondents. And why would you have something for zero dollar amount? Because that's a blanket purchase agreement. So from here on out, this company called Eager Harbor 
Eagle Harbor Solutions is one, if not the only company that's going to be knowing about contracts that come out next. So you want to reach out and find out and contact the prime. That's all you need to do. Just like Sally and Greg were talking about the prime contractor that was walking around in, in boots and a cowboy hat. This is exactly what he's doing. He's going after the prime contractors and he can ask the buyer, he can ask Rashida who it is. If it's a huge prime like Deloitte or North of Grumman or Lockheed Martin, you know for a fact that this buyer knows the program manager and the contracting person inside the prime. And that's an easy ask. You can ask the buyer and they'll give you a referral. Imagine getting a referral from the person who's writing the check to the contractor. Are they going to listen to you? Yes. Are they going to talk with you? Yes. Are they going to talk to you? You just say, take my capability statement. Even if it's a rocking capability statement, everybody else is knocking on their door. You have an entryway. It changes the game, ladies and gentlemen. And it only takes a couple minutes a day. And within a, if within a month, you're going to have 100 people in your pipeline. And you're going to get more and more and more. And the system's going to learn about you so it can give you better information every single time. It is totally different. Nobody else operates this way. And you'll never run into anybody who's just waiting on Sam.gov. Somebody call you on Sam.gov. You're doing exactly what you need to do to build relationships. That's what you can do now in the CR. They're not buying anything. And if they are, they're buying it from somebody who already has a contract vehicle. This is your job, build relationships. Our job is to help you do it. Rafa can help you. This system helps you. And then when you need to reach program managers, GovBrief helps you. But this is the tool that everybody can use. There isn't anybody that can't benefit from this. So do yourself a favor. If you just go to samradar.com, you can try it for free. And you can hear what people say, by the way. This is this is uh, Steve Kennedy. This is from Monday Roundtable. That's one other thing I will tell you. Every week, Sally referred to this. Every week we get together. If you can come, great. If you can't, that's okay. We'll send you the the recordings. You can you can take a look at them if you want. But these are Sam Radar members that are helping each other do business. It's a peer advisory group. You can't even get in unless you're a Sam Radar member. This is how we make change. This is how we're going to change the IDIQ problems that we have. If we're going to work together. We're going to win things together. Teaming agreements, joint ventures happen. Subcontracting opportunities happen every week with other Sam Radar members because they're the ones that are winning. You can be a winner too. So there you go. That's all you need to do. Go right here, try it for free, and you get to save 150 bucks and lock in your price. Do it. Do it while you can. This thing is blowing up. All right, guys, I'm going to let you guys get out of here. That was enough for me. If you have any other questions, please feel free to reach out to me. That's my phone number. That's my direct email, dlo at isifederal.com and 202-568-6398 will ring my desk. So if you need anything from me, please let me know. Join me tomorrow for the sam.gov tutorial if you would like to know Behind the scenes, oh, also, Sam Radar tells you all about the things that are on Sam.gov. It'll give you the 2% that hits Sam.gov. How you like that? So all of those things wrapped in. We'll be talking about that tomorrow. Any last-minute questions before we jump? I'll check the, these here. And I don't see anything. You're welcome, Debbie. There you go. We'll get you sign up for Sam Radar, get your templ templates and scripts. That's exactly what you get. And Gregory will talk as well. Anybody got, else got anything else? They can raise their hand or they can, I'll, I'll unmute you. Let me see what we got. Hey, Wesley. Go ahead, Wesley. You there? Not sure you can. If you have a microphone, you can unmute. Debbie, you there? You still there, Deb? Yes, I am. Awesome. 
I'm just making sure. Planning out a menu. Planning out a menu from when we meet. That's right. Yeah, we need to get some gumbo going on. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Wesley, can you unmute yourself? I see your, your hand raised. Or if, did I miss something? And you're welcome, Stan. Let's see if there's anybody else that, that's got anything else here. Uh, you're welcome, Daniel. I'm hoping that helped with you, Darwin, about how you can build relationships. You have the handouts. Yes, the handouts are... Oh, boom. That's the top one there. And if it's not there, there, I might have to get some other pieces in there if they're, if they're missing, but they will be available and make sure they get it. You're welcome, Terrence. Appreciate that, man. All right. We're going to get you guys out of here. Uh, appreciate you, Rafa. You got any last minute comments for anybody? You still there, Rafa? Maybe not. <laughs> I might be all by myself. I'm all by myself. All right, guys, we'll get you out of here. Thank you.